Hello everyone, it's Jacob with the Game Block. Before we start the video, I'd like to address the fact that I haven't been uploading as consistently as usual. The weekend I was supposed to upload was Thanksgiving and I was spending time with family, then the weekend after that was my birthday and I was going to upload a video, but my parents threw me a surprise party which made it so then I didn't have the time to make a video. But now we're at this weekend and I'm finally able to make a video which is a great thing because a new Star Wars trailer just dropped for a new Star Wars game and there is no way in heck I am passing up the opportunity to geek out about it and tell you all of the many school details you had no idea were important. Now with that out of the way, on to the video. So if you couldn't tell by my little rant at the beginning of the video or by the title of the video itself, today we're going to be going over and breaking down the trailer we got for Star Wars Eclipse at the Game Awards, as well as going over a few things on the game's official website. So the first thing we see in the trailer is the event that the game is named after, the Eclipse, and then it cuts to an eye looking at the Eclipse. Whoever this person is, we don't know who it is, only that they're going to definitely have severe eye damage from looking straight at a solar eclipse, but nothing really super important in this clip. After that, we get our first look at these strange looking aliens that we have no idea who they are, because this is their first time appearing in Star Wars, and they appear to be drumming on this strange gong that looks to be attached to a tree. We get to see some more of the tree and the roots and everything later. But we don't have really much other info on these people, given that it is their first time appearing in Star Wars. And after that, we get a cut to the Eclipse, and then we get the Lucasfilm logo, and we all know it's Star Wars. After that, we see an extremely damaged ship hurtling towards what looks like it could be any planet, but upon closer inspection, it's obviously a planet that we all know and love. See, you can see the main planet, not the one that it's heading towards, but the orange planet in the background. That is actually Yavin Prime, because as you can see, the moon that is surrounding it is Yavin 4. These two planets individually could be really any planet, but put together it's almost definitely Yavin. Also, the planet that the ship is heading towards actually isn't a planet at all, it's likely just one of Yavin's other moons, and it looks so big because it's so much closer to our viewpoint. Now, whether this is a ship that your playable character is in, or it's just something that we see in a random cutscene, I can't really say, we don't really have enough information for that. Now in this next clip, we get a wide shot of a city which looks to be somewhere in Naboo especially because it looks like the river that we see is the same river that we see Anakin and Padme walking by in Attack of the Clones. We also see a guard there in blue armor which almost looks like it's Mandalorian, but we'll see it's not in a later clip. After that we get a few quick cuts of some people in a marketplace. A guy carrying green furry creatures, a Mon Calamari, a mysterious figure with a hat and a cloak. We see two more of the guards in the blue armor that we saw before, though I don't think this is Naboo on this planet, I think this is a different planet where these guards are stationed as well. This looks a lot like Batu, the planet that the Galaxy's Edge parks are based off of, and then we see a Duros with an eye patch, who looks like he's checking to see if he's being followed. More drumming creepy gray alien guys, we can see a little bit more of the area they're in this time. Then we get a shot of a pond with an animal drinking from it with some rock formations and a sunset behind it, and there's a speeder going across the background. This reminds me a lot of the scene in Attack the Clones with the wide shot of Anakin on the speeder going to go save, or he fails to save, his mother from the sand people. I don't know if this was intentional, but it looks very similar to that scene. And after that, YODA'S IN THIS GAME, PEOPLE! So it makes complete sense for Yoda to be alive during this era, because as the website for Star Wars Eclipse says, this game takes place during the High Republic era, which takes place around 80 or so years before the Phantom Menace. So Yoda won't look very different at all from how he looked in the prequels. Now before we move on from this clip, let's take a quick look at the Jedi Council Chambers from Revenge of the Sith. Notice anything different? You see, depending on the species of the Jedi Master, they'll get a different chair in the Jedi Council Chambers to account for their different anatomy than the other species. The only unique chair in this clip, however, from the game trailer, is Yoda's, meaning that pretty much all of the other Jedi Council members at the time are not only humanoid, but also are very similar in biology to humans themselves. This could mean that either A, all the Jedi Council members that were on the Jedi Council at the time of this game either died before the prequels, or they just decided to leave the Order and the people in the prequels took their place. 
Either way, we're definitely going to be seeing a different Jedi Council in this game. After that, we get a shot of some guards escorting some giant creature that looks to be carrying something important on its back. After that, we get a shot of an unfinished protocol droid that actually looks a lot like the make and model of C-3PO. I've heard that some people think that this might actually be C-3PO, or at least a droid made with the parts that Anakin constructed to become C-3PO. Another shot of the eclipse, which is closer to nearing its completion. And that person, again, staring right at the sun. My guy, put some sunglasses on, you're gonna burn your eyes out. After that, we get a shot of two Jedi, which I think they're training, not actually fighting, because there were not many, if any, fallen Jedi at this time period. In fact, this is why the Jedi were so caught off guard by Darth Maul in The Phantom Menace. They hadn't seen a Sith in millennia. So, they're probably just training, even though it's a particularly dangerous place to train. I mean, they just fall right to their death, but these Jedi are definitely not fighting. After that, we have a planet that, again, is not really obvious what it is at first glance. The two most obvious options would be Yavin 4, since we saw that from space earlier, or Naboo. But upon closer inspection, it is almost definitely Naboo, because in the bottom left corner, you can see a Naboo starfighter crashed and probably waiting to be scrapped. And Naboo starfighters were only used by the Naboo Defense Force. They weren't something that were widespread throughout the galaxy and they just happened to be named because they were made at Naboo. More creepy drumming people, this is where you can really sort of start to see the roots around them and that they're in some sort of giant forest. After that we get a clip of the same speeders that we saw the same kind of on Naboo going across the water and towards a building which has a Y-shaped symbol on it, and this actually may be very important later. Same with these speeders, which I believe are part of the same organization that has that Y-shaped logo. Then we get a shot of a Nemoidian, who I believe is definitely a member of the Trade Federation, given what we see a little bit further on in the trailer. And also, I think that the Trade Federation may be one of the main antagonists of the game as well, again, given a few things that we see later on. I'm not going to talk about those yet until we see them, though. This is also the same species as Newt Gunray. This is impossible! Next up, we have a shot of two Jedi igniting their lightsabers against a horde of what looked to be troopers equipped for snowy weather charging at them. I don't know why they're not just using their blasters to keep their range advantage instead of charging at the people with the lightsabers, but other than that, not really a whole lot to see in this clip. After that, we get a shot of who I'm presuming to be a Jedi, and I feel like she'll either be a playable character or a particularly important NPC. I say that because I don't feel like they give any just random NPC this long of a shot, or just any shot that only they're in whatsoever. And after that, we get a really important shot, which I think reveals a lot about the story of the game. It looks like these people in this army are Nemoidians as well, however they are definitely not Trey Federation, as you can see that same Y symbol on their armor. I think what's happening is that there are two different factions of Nemoidians, being the Trade Federation and whoever these people are, and there's a conflict between them, which is causing a lot of unrest in the galaxy and the Jedi have to go in and deal with that. That's just a hunch, but given how big of an army these Nemoidians have, I feel like they would definitely have been mentioned in Star Wars later on if the Jedi hadn't wiped them out, so I expect they will definitely be destroyed at some point towards the end of this game. More creepy drumming guys, and this time we can actually really see the area that they're in, and then right after we see them, we see the Eclipse again, and I'm about to go over in a tiny bit the correlation between them and the Eclipse. And here's where my theory is basically confirmed. The same kind of speeder ship things that we saw going towards the place with the V-shaped logo before are now attacking a Trade Federation ship, or specifically a Lucrehulk droid control ship. Another super quick shot of the Creepy Drummer guys, more of the Trade Federation battle. Creepy Drummers, Federation battle. Creepy Drummers, Federation battle. I'm pretty sure these two things are going to be the main two conflicts of the game if they're going to be showing them this much in just the first trailer. After that, we get to see the Creepy Drummers again, and look, we get to see their face. It's Voldemort! <laughs> And this shot of the demented little drummer boys is not only important because we get to see what they look like, but we actually get to see why the heck they're drumming. 
It appears they're using the power of the Eclipse to enact some sort of ritual, hence the drums, to awaken this creature from this black sludge. Now whatever this creature is, if this is going to be one of the main conflicts of the game, it must be really powerful for it to have gotten the Jedi's attention. Maybe it's force sensitive, I don't think it's a Sith because they mentioned they haven't seen a Sith in Millennium in the prequels, but I will say it is almost certainly some form of force user. And finally, we see the Eclipse coming to completion, and we see, finally, the name of the game, Star Wars Eclipse, and its logo. So, that's all that there is to find in the trailer. But, let's now go over to Star Wars Eclipse's official website to see if we can find any details that weren't in the trailer. So, now we're at the game's website. So, as you can see, there's the trailer right at the beginning. We're not going to watch that because, I mean, we just saw it. And if we scroll down a bit, we can see that there are a few screenshots that tell us a little bit about the game. So, the first one is the two Jedi facing the army of snow-equipped troopers, and it says, Compose an original Star Wars story. With all new characters and environments, you have the power to make choices with consequences thanks to many outcomes in this deeply branching narrative. Now, right off the bat, this has a few problems. This might not be canon, and I know it's possible that your choices could affect the storyline and it could all go into the same ending, and then that could fit into canon, but it still says many outcomes, meaning that I don't think this is going to be canon, because you know how Disney likes to keep everything nice and neat within the canon, which I do appreciate. I mean, Star Wars is, after all, kind of its own external universe. It's great to have continuity, but... This will likely not then fit into the canon, unless there is a specific series of events that happens through a certain series of choices that Disney says this is the official canon version. After that, we have Shape Your Fate in the Outer Rim. In an uncharted section of the galaxy with never-before-seen species and planets to discover, this part of the Outer Rim is rife with opportunity and political tensions that could alter the fabric of peace. What will you do? Now, not only is this further pushing forward the fact that it's going to have multiple endings, which again, I'm skeptical on how it's going to fit into canon, but it seems to be proving my theory even more on how the Trade Federation and whatever this other Nemoidian group is are going to be fighting, or at least having some sort of political tensions, which could alter the fate of the galaxy. Maybe this is how the Trade Federation got to such a point of power that it was able to blockade Naboo in The Phantom Menace, which of course we know was manipulated behind the scenes by Palpatine. Maybe we'll even get to see Plagueis behind the scenes manipulating the galaxy to put into action his plan that Palpatine eventually carries out. After that, we can see that you can grab free digital goodies from Star Wars Eclipse to use on social networks, phone, tablet, or computer, and check back later for new content. So this obviously is just kind of stuff for fans to download as like computer wallpapers, phone wallpapers, things to post. So this doesn't really have anything to do with the actual game itself. Now let's go to the section called The Game. Discover Star Wars Eclipse, a new action adventure multiple character branching narrative game set in the High Republic era, presented to you by Quantic Dream and Lucasfilm Games, now early in development. So there are a few things that we can note here. It will have multiple characters, which I'm pretty sure was pretty much a given, given Quantic Dream's past games, like Detroit Become Human. And this again is confirming that it takes place in the High Republic era. And it's early in development, meaning that we probably won't be actually getting this game until 2023 or 2024. And I think if we get it in 2023, we will be really lucky. Beneath that, it says Star Wars Eclipse lets you play as a diverse cast of charismatic characters, each with their own story, abilities, and role to play in the tapestry of events that could alter the carefully balanced piece of the Outer Rim. So this doesn't really tell us very much, except at least now we know that all of the characters we play as won't be exact carbon copies of one another. They'll actually have some differences in gameplay. And the final part we have in the game section of the website is Choices Have Consequences. Every decision you make can have dramatic repercussions on your journey. The way of life in the Outer Rim is being threatened, and you must define your path. So this really all it's saying is that your choices will influence what outcome of the game you have, not really anything we haven't heard before already. So now let's move on to the art gallery portion of the website. Now I won't be going over every single screenshot, just the ones that give us some information that we didn't already know. Like for example, this one. A soldier leading an army. 
you, you didn't think we could just, you know, figure that one out? So first up, we have a drummer with tree roots in front of him. Only really pertinent thing about this one is this is confirming that it's tree roots in front of him, meaning that he's definitely in some sort of forest. After that, we have a group of animids in red garb walk down the street holding staffs, and an animid, according to Wikipedia, were a sentient species that were native to Yablari. Because they lacked vocal cords, they communicated with one another through a sophisticated and subtle combination of hand and body language, so these guys can't speak. And finally, we have two Jedi spar with their lightsabers on a bridge. So these Jedi definitely are sparring, one of them isn't fallen or has become a Sith. This is just simply a training exercise, likely between Master and Padawan. And that is everything we know so far about Star Wars Eclipse. If you like the video, please press the like button and subscribe, as well as hit that notification bell so you're notified for all of my new videos coming out. With that out of the way, thank you all for watching. I'm Jacob with the Game Block, signing off.